Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, this is Ben in the Otaku Generation hole. Please let me out. It's cold and dark and I hear wolves. Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation. Next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. Man, it's so cold here, I'd rather be at MAGFest watching Artemis on a 50-foot screen than hang out here watching anime in a freezer. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where it's at least a few degrees warmer compared to the outside. Show number 657, January 10th, 2018, with this week's topic, 2018 Winter Impressions, Part 1. And now, snow people we made this weekend. Number one, Frosty the Snowman. Number two, the Snow Wampa. Number three, Jack Frost. Number four, Queen Elsa of Arendelle. And number five, a small army of abominable mutant snow goons. And now, someone who once napped inside a tauntaun and refuses to talk about it, Alan Chase. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Uh, going pretty good. We're you know, go- back from the holidays. Back to the deep freeze and the chilling winter winds. Yeah, and uh, welcome to 2018. <laughs> Yay! Um, the first recorded show in actual 2018. For uh, that's for true. These. the The previous show was was recorded on the cusp of 2017. Yeah. We so, like to do all. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the miracle hi, of time shifting. Hi, hello, everyone. I'm Alan. I am Matt. Catch up. And Paul. <laughs> What's freeze? What's bang? What's squeak with the OG crew? Indeed. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about do, uh, but we have a lot of stuff to review as well because we are basically doing the winter impressions um, yeah, as, of, right. as of this first show. But we got a couple things. So first, uh, you guys, the two of you had tasted some cookies from James. They held up over the last two weeks. Yes, um, our, our fanatical, loyal listener James sent us cookies to appease our wrath and they yes. were darn good cookies so our wrath is appeased what was uh, happy. uh what would uh <laughs> would you have met what were the other couple things you had oh, he, tasted? he sent in a real variety there were yeah. some with like raisins and apples and pumpkin spice and mm-hmm. a couple of others that weren't labeled so i wasn't sure what they were but they were like dark and round with the white layer in the middle mm. um but i just like the oatmeal raisin cookies those are good yeah okay and um Paul, what about you? So let's see. I had one of the sort of whoopie pie things. Yeah. In the sandwich. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that was good. And uh, something peanut. I can't remember. What <laughs> oh, it was. okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that was good. Yeah. Peanut butter cookie. Yeah. So we still have a lot of them. So guys, you know, if you feel welcome, to take take some home. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, you know, because I, I, I won't be eating them on my own. There's too much stuff to be eating alone. Um, we have a Loot Crate. We'll do that in just a, a little bit. This is a Loot Crate for 2017 December. Um, which just got here. Which got here on the, like, uh, like just after Christmas. So, um, you know, giving consideration that they ship these things late and then all the shipping activity, I can understand why. Um, but I think they sent it out late intentionally. So... Um, regardless, there it is. Um, so we'll we'll, we'll dive we'll into that. We'll be going into that in a minute. Yeah, and then um, Paul, actually, it'll be fine. Feels the November one. Y- y- yeah, <laughs> well, it still would be pretty bad though. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's the December one. So um, Paul got you a laptop bag for your laptop, which we have to yet set up, Matt. Yeah, it's way cool. Yeah, set so, up the laptop or the bag. Both, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll do that near future. And then, uh, Paul, you weren't here, weren't present. I was not. <laughs> so, no, sorry so about that. You got some stuff from people. I do. Okay, awesome. Um, so the the one Yeah, that, that's yours. Yeah, that one right there <laughs> okay. is from Botas. Oh, that's right. Ketchup. <laughs> Ketchup. Oh, and it's wrapped in like little snowman paper. Everyone was. <laughs> Wait, oh, here we go. Didn't we, uh, we, didn't we have a new name? New, 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 yeah, new, yeah, we had something like yeah, that. Yeah, I forgot. But, what it okay, was. we Mustard. have some uh, excellently uh, cast uh, Star Wars TIE Fighter versus X-Wing. 
Yay. So I, I looked at I looked at Ben and I saw his package was still. And I'm like, didn't you want to open them? He's like, they're collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not touching that. So yeah, awesome. you know, they could be. But I was like, yeah, screw Good that. Feature. I'm gonna open them all up. So that, that was also the best of the uh, LucasArts Star Wars games: X-wing versus Tie Fighter. Oh really? Uh, yeah. yeah, absolute classic. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Nice. And then um, I and uh, actually and then we have the selections from the uh, updated list of CD keys this year. Mm. Oh. So, uh, for for Steam, so <laughs> I am uh, messaging you this list right now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you, I'll you, look through it during may, the week. <laughs> yeah, you may select. Ha- I mean, select however many you want. I mean, these yeah. keys are just sitting here. So there's like a mm-hmm. bunch of AAA stuff, which is getting in there too. Um, Bryce got a chance to look through or not? Uh, he has not. I gave him something specific because oh. we had been discussing stuff. So you you can have first pick, and then uh, Bryce can uh, sort through later on that okay thanks very much yeah and then i got you something and at this point i totally forgot what i got you (laughs) yeah so um, a large what did i get filled with tissue paper (laughs) oh damn it's a uh it's a kaiji t-shirt okay that's pretty i was that's that's pretty hot i was concerned i'm like did i get him this before this one i'm like "Mm, maybe i've saw this something like this and i thought about it Oh, zawa, zawa, zawa. Yeah, so... Uh, the, yeah. The, the rhubarb sound. Yeah. <laughs> kind of on it. Awesome. That's excellent. So I saw that. I'm like, oh, that's t- totally Paul's. Okay, so this was sort of okay, uh, a here? risk buy. Okay. Um, it's a small box. It's a very small box labeled Automatic Pro 3G Car Adapter. Yeah. So the mm-hmm. service on that, it comes with the device for five years. Yeah. Um, everything is is basically, you know, the Biden device itself yeah. qualifies. So what you can do is you can connect this up because I know you were playing with this before. Yeah, yeah. What is the ODB-M or whatever interface? Uh, um, ODB-D or ODB? I always forget yeah. it. But anyhow, so you, you plug this in in place of or into yeah, that socket okay. and then you can, with the app and also through a website, you can basically track and do all the things and it because awesome. it has built-in services into it, um, it's always sending off on its own independent thing. So just attach it to your car. And uh, I, I, I had eyes on that for you for a while. And I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. I'm going to pull the trigger. And then they had the pro version. So awesome. um, I, th- I figured, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to help you like when you're getting off the train and you're looking for your car, if it's going to help you that, that close. But we'll give you a, a sense of your travels and stuff like okay, that. Okay, awesome. Well, thank Plus you. all your readings from your app. So if you have a question about, oh, I need a whatever you can do that you know from an app when you're at work neat yeah so that was okay it. cool well thank you you and unfortunately i have forgotten <laughs> to bring yours and i'm so sorry about that i just no, left okay. it when i was uh, packing up because i had to anyway um thank you very much that, that's awesome yeah very cool. cool very cool all right so let's go in a loot box yeah let's uh go loot crate look in the box see what we got i think i'll probably <clears> keep <throat> in the shirt if i remember it i don't know i don't know Okay, to start off, the shirt is from a video game. The name right now escapes me. Someone can help me with identifying that game. Hmm. If I could. That's a distinctive uh, design, but it's not ringing a bell for me. I don't know, but it's pretty cool looking shirt. I don't it recognize it. You'll have to check the catalog that, to identify the, it. Or actually, the tag might. Oh, Destiny. 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 That's, it. Ah, okay. that's right. I heard, I, yeah, I heard about <laughs> it. It says it on the, the PAL area. Ah, I mm. yeah. did a giveaway. Yeah, okay. so I might want to keep that shirt. That's a pretty yeah. pretty slick shirt. Um, and a Assault Kingdom mini Gundam model thing. Mm. So Ooh, whoever wants, uh, whoever has their eyes on, oh, crap. whoever has their eyes on that, um, I'll have to I'll have to get actual close shots of it. You know, mm-hmm. whenever a little bit later. If no one else wants it, now I'll take it. Okay, so let me yeah, get I'm, a good. I'm job. a Gundam fan, but I'm not that big a Gundam fan. And the new crate pin, it's a nice little rocket, all retro style. It's quite nicely made, actually. Hmm. You mind if I take this? Or no, do you uh, want that the, one? the pin I want. Yeah. Oh, Alan I keep, likes I, pins? I, no, I keep all the loot crate pins. Uh-huh. Uh, do you want to see the pin? Ah, yeah. That's actually so the, the, one know, the, of the canisters that's over there has crafted. all of them that it's I've received. Yeah. The traditional 1950s rocket ship. Yeah. yeah. And we've got a 16 month calendar of 2018 Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Ooh. So if you need a calendar, hey, here's the calendar. Yeah, if you're interested in that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and I'm going to spend most of the year in uh, 2018, so I could probably use this. Okay, cool. I don't think the box actually transforms into anything. It's a scene from Star Wars type of thing of Star it's Destroyer. It's a space battle. Yeah. Hmm? Yep. What's the, uh, what's, what's the theme yep. on the pin? 
Oh, the pin is... Classic Joseph Campbell rocket ship to the stars. And you might as well hand it that my way eventually. I'm not sure what... How did you figure that out? It's just a traditional pulp magazine yeah. sci-fi rocket. Uh, explore. Oh, explore. explore. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's this also this postcard instead of getting the book of it that tells us what was in the mm, thing. Oh, okay. wait. It says, exclusive. That's the need to shirt. Oh, yeah. And the final object is a Star Wars Adventures IDW comic book. It's actually pretty thick. Yeah, anyone want it? If no one else wants it, I'll take it. Okay. <coughs> Do you want to look? Hmm? Yeah. You, okay. Yeah, okay. I'll have to get a better shot of that. Yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah. it's a pretty neat looking pin. But yeah, Matt, I, I keep them all. I, they're all kind of go into the container uh-huh. over there. It's just sort of, you know, the it's, loot crate it's thing. It's a thing you do. It's a thing I do for all the loot crates that I have evidence that I got. Oh, okay. um, well, but it, anyhow. I suppose I should like do a mini fresh segment to, to like catch everybody up on what I've been doing lately. Yeah, well, um, what's been going on? I went away for the holidays to visit with my family. Had fun doing that. Got Legos for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yay. So that's that's my big thing. Also saw the movie Jumanji, which turned out to be lots of, you know, family-friendly fun. Um, just about everybody in this movie is good. I mean, all of the four leads are good. Um, particular kudos to Jack Black for playing a 16-year-old girl who is transported into a video game and occupying a middle-aged pudgy professor's body. And deprived of her smartphone. Tragic, tragic, tragic. Mm. Um, but, you know, Karen Gillan is hot. The Rock is cool. Actually sort of playing against type as someone who isn't just, like, smirking and confident and muscular. He's, you know, a nerdy guy transported into a video game in the body of the big brawny professor. So he is sort of unsure of himself, a little bit doubtful about, like, the whole things and... Yeah, he's genre savvy, but on the other hand, it really gives you perspective when you're like swallowed by, you know, giant animals and killed mm-hmm. and then regurgitated. So have you seen the or the yeah. movie before with Robin Williams and how would you compare it to if so? Uh I have actually not seen that movie. Um I just thought it was a lame idea, like, oh god, another people get sucked into a game concept and I'm just very leery of those these days because I've seen so many bad movies done around that concept that I never watched the original Jumanji. So yeah, I um I can't really I kind of recall seeing it on TV and watching parts of it. I I don't remember or recall watching a full thing of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but uh, but I definitely remember the one with Robin Williams, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, given it was uh, you know, what kind of movie it was. I was surprised Rob Williams was in it at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't have uh, bad memories of it. Yeah. So, but I I don't know. I'd have to go see the... the uh, New one? Yeah. I, no, I'd have to see like oh, the, the original one and then make a comparative. Well, originally it was one. a book. Right. Nail Street book. Mm-hmm. Oh. The Gundam's actually pre-assembled. They took away with the five me assembling a Gundam. Ah, <laughs> oh, snapping it on Mike. Let's see. Uh, yeah. But that aside from it. that, uh, mostly I've just sort of been <laughs> huddling at home, trying to keep warm because mm-hmm. it's it's been like atypically cold for this winter yeah. here. Um, for viewers who live outside the U.S., it was down to like eight Fahrenheit with freezing, howling winds. Yeah, which is like negative thirteen on the centigrade scale. And you know, just earlier today, I went to get my car washed because it was covered with road salt <laughs> and let's yeah. see the temperature outside was only 17 degrees fahrenheit which is negative eight celsius yeah th- this house and i remember going gosh it's so warm right now <laughs> uh i um uh, so the problem with this house is i had this thermostat that was sort of a, a piece of junk and i finally replaced it in 2017 as like a gift to myself mm. and so the house is operating better but the problem is this house was never designed for like negative or below freezing like, temperatures n- like in the tens uh yeah. temperatures so we're sitting in a room that's basically about 60 degrees right now and it feels cold um, and it, it, you know, and this is the basement, of course. So upstairs, it's yeah. you know, it's near seventy, but it's it's been struggling while while it's just been on, 
And uh, oh boy, did I not love the power bill for December. Yeah. So I can't imagine what uh, January is going to look like. So yeah. 62 degrees Fahrenheit is about 16 degrees Celsius, if yeah. you're curious. All the people that already do Celsius already calculated that in their head. Get up. <laughs> no, not really. They never use Fahrenheit. We're um, the only ones who still use it. Right. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, by comparison with Simon, you know, you, mm. you tell him Fahrenheit he has an answer in, like, less than half a second. So, um, yeah, but anyhow. Okay, cool. So that that was it. Uh, we got that accomplished. Uh, and, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, Botas, anything real brief to talk about? I've been watching through Speed Racer about halfway through it. And yep. I also watch through all of Kino's journey. I'll go over the Speed Racer when we have time for a proper squish. But right, yeah. mm-hmm. I will just say that after rewatching the original Kino's journey, it is a lot better than the new one. Mm-hmm. That being said, um, it reminds me a lot more like hell. Remember there's a time of things like Lane and Boogie Pop Phantom. Those sort of like sort of spooky anime. Yeah, yeah sort yeah. of creepy. The original Kino's Journey really does fit into that sort of category. Like, the Mm -hmm. tone was... Like, it's kind of Twilight zone E where you go someplace and there's something deeply unsettling about the society of this town. I don't even just mean from an overarching, like, plot point of Mm -hmm. the Kino's, like, journeys within the series, but also just the tone of it. Like, uh, if people have watched Bookie Pop Phantom, there's a bit of, like, bell, ding-type sound that they now sometimes use, and they actually do that in Kino as well. Didn't remember that. Like, now and then, just oh. to emphasize the moment, there'd be the sort of, like, ding sort of hmm. thing. So. Yeah, weird, I don't know. But okay. that being said, the original Kinos is really good. The new one isn't bad. It's just, compared to the old one, it's not. It's just not, not as, as good. As. Yeah, but still... An interesting thing is that like three of the ep- or three of the stories, even though one of them takes place over two episodes in the original, but three of the stories actually have been redone in the new one. So there's a co- compare and contrast thing that you can oh, do as well, which okay. is sort of interesting. But I don't want to drone on too much, so um, we'll have to have some. Before before that, uh, new fanboy forecast came out on Tuesday, and Polymatic is back came out on Sunday, uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and also the until I turn it off, uh, the website is in the snowstorm mode right now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go look at the website, it's snowing uh, on the page. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, okay. So, Paul. So, let's see. What have I been doing? So, I have not been watching a bunch of anime until like the past few days when I have been saturating myself in stuff we will be talking mm-hmm. about shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, let's see. I'm almost caught up on March Comes in Like a Lion, which mm-hmm. continues to be excellent. I uh, finished up, uh, what is it? Love is Like a Cocktail. Um, you know, l- slight food thing. Uh, the last couple uh, had a little bit more character depth. To- I-, I wish that series had been given a little more time to breathe. The episodes were just way too short to accomplish anything. So they kind of improved near the end because I remember they really like, sort of felt let down last time. You yeah, mentioned it. I mean it was okay. Um, it, yeah, the, they started to do a little more on the characters as opposed to they actually had to stretch one across two separate episodes <laughs> because they wanted like a tiny bit of like little de- character content. development moment in there. Um, the drinks were not stupendous, so as a food show, I don't know that it really held up on that front. But nonetheless, it was okay to watch. Uh, let's see. I can't remember. Did I discuss finishing up a recovery of an MMO junkie? Um, not sure if you mentioned. Yeah, I can't remember. So did you finish that one up? Yes, I did. Did you also watch the extra episode left and that they released? I have not yet watched it. That is on my list to do. Have it you doesn't, seen? Yeah, it doesn't really continue the story. It, it does happen after mm. the story takes place, but the, one of them is like a complete filler, just cutesy right. episode, and the other one... It doesn't really do much more, but that's kind of show a bit more of their relationship has progressed. But okay, that's still. good, because I was a little cheesed that like it was such a slight ending, since this this was theoretically a series about adults. Yeah. I mean, they tied it up well, but like, you know, they, they how, about, how about a kiss? Come on, give, give oh. us something to work with here. <laughs> oh, they'd be possibly disappointed, then why? Of course, it still shows them acting yeah. more like really shy mm. yeah but, but nonetheless i i thought it was a good series uh, enjoyable mm. n- nice romance for last season yeah. yeah i enjoyed it but i do agree it's and unfortunately even up to episode 11 that for them being in their theories or almost theories i think with the one character that they're way too shy about things yeah i mean aren't. even if they weren't experienced it would be okay to progress the story a little faster yeah. for the adult audience who's presumably watching this so um yeah uh, other than that, a uh, bunch of games which I won't talk about because we have a lot of other stuff on the agenda. 
Um, okay, and then uh, I guess this will bring us up to the last little thing we want to do before we get into reviews. It's the part of the show where they talk about the show for half of the show. It's the feedback. You guys remember the days when that was true? Oh, yeah. maybe only Matt and I do. So anyhow, um, we, we got a feedback. We got a feedback, and it's... Uh, uh, subject is it's been too long from Hikikokurgi, who it has indeed been a while since we've heard from. And uh, Hikikokurgi writes, "Hello, OG crew. Last time I emailed you and listened to the podcast was in July, so I thought I should say hi. During that time, I've been listening to other podcasts. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm back, I wanted to say congrats on the new website. It's a great improvement on the previous version. Also, I think it's cool that you added info on the cast members and the fallen soldiers throughout the years." Although, I think there are perhaps some members that are missing. And uh, I guess Albert and Jefferson aren't part of the cast anymore. I also graduated college with a degree in graphic design. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, OG clap. Oh, yeah. yeah. Since we're going old school here. Uh, Not refundable. <laughs> now, if I could only find a decent job, that would be great. Uh. Also, it's funny to think that I found your podcast when I was a freshman in high school, and now I'm part of the workforce. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully, I can catch up soon. Yay. So uh, I read that email when it came in, and uh, I was in a place where I was right near Albert that I showed it to him. And he's <laughs> like, well, just tell him I'm retired from the show. I'm like, you yeah, know, whatever. Um, yeah, so Jefferson doesn't really, you know, it is funny. He comes into the studio, and the microphone that's dedicated to Bryce, because Bryce is here way more often by comparison, um, Jersey rolls in like, why, why is, why isn't that my microphone anymore? And I'm like, cause you're, you come in maybe, maybe at, at best, like once a year. So, uh, you know, so, you know, he doesn't really actively participate on the show. He yeah. just sort of is part of our channel. He comments every here and there, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, I probably put him in the sort of past cast or just occasional cast or something like that. So, yeah. cause he doesn't really actively participate. There, there is general rules on, on, you know, how to be a cast member here. You have to generally, you participate. have to do this thing we call <coughs> showing up. Yeah. Showing up and participating and, or it used to be a little bit more, um, more rigid where, um, if you wanted to do something aside from just participating, you'd also have to produce or participate in activities towards the segments, right? So, yeah. uh, there's just one more piece of news that I just remembered. Um, I just read that uh, Amazon is uh, yep. rolling their anime strike programming into the regular Amazon Prime. Prime. Yep. So you won't have to pay a separate fee to get mm -hmm. the uh, the Amazon anime stuff anymore. Yeah. yeah. Hit that ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I'm good because now I can watch Made in Abyss on my Amazon Prime account. Yeah. That was a real jerk ass move on their part. Anime I, yeah, I I think <coughs> it's been shown that you have to have a whole smeg load of anime mm -hmm. in your service to make it a worthwhile destination the for thing people is, to spend money on. Even if it were just a service on its own, that would have been tolerable. Tolerable, mm -hmm. but make predicating it on having Amazon Prime was the real asshole. Right. Wait, you had opinion. to have Amazon Prime and only then could you buy yes, anime. Yes, exactly. that's correct. Yep. That's why I'm oh, just so rancorous move. about it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty... If you're going to make it a separate thing, make it its own separate thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um... Bitches. It, it was just, uh... Yeah, I don't know. It was not It was not very cool to do that. Um, and there, they did have, or they picked up some good series that I would be interested in watching. Uh-huh. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to pay another $60 a year. Like, I'm already paying enough. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it seems like, oh, it's only it's only six bucks or five bucks. It's not that. No, it, it says a lot. You when realize, you're already paying for like three or four anime services. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's too it's much. It's too much. It is absolutely too much. It's why I don't pay for like Foonies thing. Like, I, wh why? Why? I don't I don't need it. Uh, Foonies <laughs> stuff has mostly moved over to Crunchyroll anyway. Right. So that's. Uh, that's a, a good one, choice. One-stop <laughs> shop for your anime mm -hmm. viewing. Uh, unless you want dubs. I mean, but, that, you know, mm. like, I get the point when it's a completely different kind of service. So um, I don't know if Crunchyroll, does Crunchyroll um, offer separate services for, like, manga? They rolled manga into their main subscription right, okay. now, I think. And the same thing with the, the drama stuff, right? I 
can't remember if the dramas are separate or not. I have not watched many. Yeah. So. so, I mean, those are those are sort of different content types that will have different kind of licensing situations to them. So I can understand a little bit with that, right? But you can get those without having to have, like, Crunchyroll generically. So, mm-hmm. But anyhow, um, okay. So I think, um, yeah, I think we're going to run to break. We'll be back in just a moment, and we will be talking about uh, new shows for the winter season. We're Where's the Buffet, buffet and, you're and you're listening to the Otaku, Otaku Generation, Generation Podcast. Podcast. And we are back from break. Um, and thank you, everyone, who sent stuff in and, and sent us email. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we do encourage it. Um, I still have the Skype stuff available. I don't know. One day I'm going to – I'm just going to kill the phone numbers. But, you know, all those things are available in – the show notes available on the website. So, um, and it's set up in such a way you can check out other shows we're doing. Maybe in 2018 we'll produce another show. I'm always kind of um, moving and shaking with trying to get other productions in place. And we get lots of yeses. And then when people realize that production actually takes effort, people burn out very quickly. And so that's why a lot of new shows don't just show up immediately on the site. Um, but nevertheless, the site is there for you guys to play and listen to things. Yeah, so. and if you want to create a new show, you don't have to do it every week for 12 years like we have done. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so what, what Kyle and Luke used to have on the end of their uh, shows, they took it out, but they had, um, I don't know what it was, it was something like uh, TakaGeneration.net or OGNetworks.tv. Uh, the reason for the season or something like that is what they used to say. It's like, oh, what are you saying there, Kyle? So uh, I, I thought that was kind of funny. They're saying that if we were killed, dried, and then <coughs> shredded into small flakes, we would be a delicious seasoning for any food or dessert. Yeah, maybe. 2018 Winter Impressions Part 1. Okay, so four-minute timer. Uh, i got to get my phone. Uh, hopefully, we'll keep the buzzing out. We got to keep these things short. We got well, eleven things to talk about, right? So, where shall we start? I guess we're going alphabetically. We are going alphabetically by translated English title. Starting out with the place further from the nu- further than the universe. Sura Yori Mo Toy Basho. Close enough. Close uh-huh. enough. And technically, shouldn't that be farther than the universe because it's an explanation of, of distance, distance yes. and not degree? Yeah, Bryce might have uh, mi- uh, mistyped it when he put it in the forum. I have not checked the no, official I think that's how they translated it. I looked up the on the wiki. That's what showed up. Yeah, okay. Yes, so this is – we started the season with a sort of avalanche of cute girls doing and or not doing stuff shows. <laughs> And this is one that looks like it's going to be cute girls not doing stuff show, but it looks like they're actually going to do something. So possibly, even though I normally, you know, don't get my hopes up much for series like this, and it's you know it's got the usual girl characters with personality traits, mm-hmm. uh, they're going to Antarctica. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. the The basic situation of this show is that you've got a girl who who doesn't really do stuff. She would love to do stuff. She would love to live her youth, saishun shitemas. But she she has this terrible problem where she plans something and gets right on the precipice of committing to it, and then she chickens out and goes home and says, well, I'll, I'll do it later, maybe. I don't know. I'm not really mumble, mumble, mumble. And she meets a, a girl at school who is actually going to do the thing and is wholly devoted to it. There's a girl whose mother went missing um, on an Antarctic expedition or something, and the girl is absolutely dedicated to going in search of her. And to this end, she is working like three part-time jobs, doesn't think about anything else, and our indecisive heroine sort of gets wrapped up in this an idea and she's like yes I'll join you in your quest and that'll be the thing that I will do. Essentially just mooching off of the girl that's worked for years to accumulate money for this trip just so that she can have a little adventure. Mm, <laughs> so <maybe>. negative. <laughs> but the thing is the girl doesn't have any other friends because right. she's been planning this trip ever since her mom vanished which was several years ago now 
and everybody in school thinks she's a nutcase. I, I recognize and relate to that little attribute, which is uh, <clears throat> I am more responsible for others than I am for myself. Meaning, like I will put up with a lot of oh, I should I should fix that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me hear some duct tape. Uh, okay, I'm sitting in the perfect example. Of this chair. This chair, anyone's ever been here realizes this thing's a mess. I should just replace it. But yet, you know, 15 years later, I've yet to do that. So um, anyhow, to that point, we have very little time to talk about it. So what else do we want to highlight? Music is good. Yeah, the, the show is pretty well animated. It has an interesting art style where there's kind of a sort of a white um, backlight highlight around the outline of all the characters, which... <coughs> at first glance makes them look like they're sort of like paper cutouts on top of the background but you know it's an interesting idiosyncratic style that I haven't seen elsewhere so mm -hmm. I'm all for it yeah I uh, thought the execution was pretty good I mean I'm not going to argue that this is going to be a great show but if you are a fan of you know sort of the uh, Moe-ish girl shows this one is I'd say a cut above the average mm. and it's pretty much at least at this point. I don't remember the ending or opening credits if they showed any more. But does the two girls, or does it seem like they're going to be more? I'm not sure. I'd, I'd be surprised if there weren't more. But I was pleased that they actually went somewhere at the end of the episode. Hmm. So uh, it's from Studio Passione, who I haven't noted much about before. Uh, they've done a couple things, uh, mostly small, so a fairly mm -hmm. young studio. But the director is Takeo Takahashi who uh, did Spice and Wolf, among a yeah. uh, number of other hmm. older shows. Okay. So. Uh, I will tell you of the bunch, um, the one I hated the least. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. High praise indeed for Alan. Link it up. Mm. Yep. So, or is anyone going to plan to watch more would recommend? I guess we just quickly do, sorry, to maybe, extend it. Maybe. I'll watch two more. Okay, I don't plan to watch more, but I do think people should at least check out one episode to see if you want to watch more. Yeah. yeah. So, A Place Further Than the Universe. It's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out at oglink.com slash 1p26. So, next up is Citrus. Uh, we could just leave this one off. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a girl relationship thing, and it is literally girls in a relationship um, because it's schoolgirl love. Our heroine, who is a fashionable, shallow girl, her mom gets married, and so she gets moved to a new school, which is very, very regimented. Everybody wears the same uniform. She gets written up on her first day for having earrings and makeup and being out of uniform. And one of the people who, who writes her up is the student council president, who is a very severe young woman who confiscates her cell phone and tells her she can't use okay, it on that, that was grabs. not just a confiscation of the cell phone that was an extremely graphic groping of mm -hmm. yes so and this sets up the sort of the a very strong theme of non-consensual sexuality which is yeah. underlying this first episode in a rather distasteful way i felt mm. yes because our heroine later finds the student council president behind the school snogging with a professor mm. and it's not really clear whether she is really interested in snogging with the professor or if she's just not resisting very much. Uh, I think at some other point of the show, show somebody mentioned that she's engaged to an, an, an elite teacher. Mm. So it's possible that he is her, her destined husband. You. That makes it only slightly less question mark, question mark, question mark, worse. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, from, from like a, just like a raw animation perspective, this series is really well put together. Yeah. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. not a fan of sort of the, the glistening uh, uh, gloss they put on the sexual scenes. Nope. But the, like the characters are fairly well drawn. The main character, I think, is well voiced, uh, mm -hmm. characterized fairly well. But then they just are going to some places that I'm not interested and watching with yep. it. So. And, yeah, I'm there. And then for a big twist at the end, it turns out that they have to live together. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah, sort of uh, coming up with a good sh reason for all this stuff to be happening was something that the, uh, the, the manga car kind of punted on, I think. But that wasn't even really the end twist. Like, like that happens and you still have another third of the episode to go where we get one more forced... Like oh, sexual rape ex ex scene, yeah, extended uh, rapey kiss. So, and this is clearly going to be an ongoing theme. So, uh, yeah. So, if you want some sort of um, 
edgy Yuri stuff. This is, I guess, an this is about here. it. Yeah. Okay. But they're not in that demographic. Then skip it, which I assume everyone here will be. Oh yes. But so, it's got schoolgirls kissing each other. So if you want to check out Citrus with that Railsy endorsement, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out ojlink.com/1p2h. Next up is Devilman Crybaby, or Devilman colon Crybaby, but the actual symbol for colon, not mm. like the word colon. This would be kind of funny. Uh, um. Given that it's a Go Nagai uh, show, uh, <laughs> I would not be surprised if colons were involved. <laughs> uh, this is a fun show if you like violence, gore, bloodshed, and more violence with a spattering of nudity. Mm. Or I can't, like, I the, the animation, the anime or director. I mean, Masaki Uwasa. Oh, yeah. It was, it's a very sort of more... Or, or it's not really a typical anime anime style. It's yeah, much more it's, cartoony. It's, it's very flat. The characters aren't really shaded all that much, which is like a typical um, buffer that buff that anime style will put on people. Is they will actually you know shadow the chins and give you like three layers of shading on really good productions. But this has no shading whatsoever. It's just like you're yellow. Boom. You're a solid yellow thing. That's it. And, and that is a very uh, sort of uh, Masaki Yuasa style, mm-hmm. but he usually goes for a sort of a more experimental, scribbly style. Yeah. And now he's going to sort of some rather exotic places of animation, uh, but also the characters are much straighter than his usual approach. He's trying to like have a happy compromise, I'm guessing, with this between this usual style and something typical, but still leaning I, towards. I think that they're getting their their expressive in, impulses out in the um, body horror segments where devils are possessing people. Uh, yes, violently dismembering them from the inside. Uh, people screaming as their limbs transform, and then they go and you know mutilate somebody else. Yeah, uh, this series um, definitely is dishing it out hard in the last like seven minutes. Uh, before then, we get introduced to the various characters: uh, the, the one super nice guy <laughs> and the one super jerky guy. And man, super jerky guy is a jerk. Yeah, he, <laughs> that's he, the theme of this show. He, he basically takes his his naive innocent friend to a decadent disco called the Sabbat, where he's like, oh yeah, people have been getting possessed by devils here. And his friend's like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, and I've got a video camera and I'm going to prove it to the world. And he's like, okay. And when it starts going down, thanks to this guy freaking out and like stabbing people with a broken bottle, mm-hmm. because, oh, they're just doing drugs and having sex at this disco. That's not hardcore enough for devils to be interested. So he starts slashing people with a broken bottle to, like, raise the, uh, I don't know, tone of the place. And then the devils start possessing people. And his whole goal at the for this is that if you get possessed by a devil, usually there's one of two things that happen. You can fight off the infestation and the devil leaves you alone. <laughs> you succumb to it and the devil goes on a rampage and then you get ripped to pieces or three you and the devil sort of coexist within your body and it doesn't kill you but you don't get rid of it so you have all the powers of the devil at your command a devil man as Crybaby. they were <laughs> so this isn't I think so much about the story if you're watching this I mean some people will be really into the story but I think this is more for like the visual stuff because although it's like by horror and grotesque it's not such a visually like pastel cartoony like not pastel what's the term uh, primary sorry yeah. primary color type style that at least for me it didn't seem like it was so much like truly horrific as much as it was just yeah I, I, I think it was uh, I mean the animation was quite interesting yeah. to watch and while I'm normally not like super into shows like this I think that the visual style is enough that I'll be checking out at least a couple more episodes now I loathe the characters and that will probably <laughs> prevent me from watching it so this uh, from what I've seen goes back to you know stick pretty close to go to guys original 1972 manga hmm. uh, from a storyline perspective I am not a big fan of this so I'm not uh, by any means an expert yeah. on it um, so I'm not like super excited about this it's neat to see a little more Masaki Yuasa I'll enjoy some of that maybe uh, watch some highlight videos later in the season after I get burned out on it. 
Yeah, I don't personally plan to watch more because similar to you, I didn't really care for the characters or if people lived or died because pretty much everyone's shown off to be annoying or a jerk or annoying yeah. jerk. That, that, <laughs> that opening theme was good, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but at least uh, if they're interested in seeing something that doesn't look like traditional anime from the animation standpoint, I think it's worth at least watching one episode just because... It's uh, because it's a trip, man. Yeah, don't watch this one on the train, though. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, you already know very quickly whether you like this kind of show, and if you do, um, then I think this is a suggestion. But um, I don't know anyone here specifically is into this kind of show, um, so I wouldn't think any of us would be watching much of it, other than what you're saying, just sort of evaluate mm-hmm. whether it changes. Or I can watch something that. Is con- like Garu isn't that far different about people being turned into monsters and fights. And I'm continuing to watch that, but the characters are given a bit more heart, so I enjoy right. watching Garu. It, it's a very old school sort of story mm-hmm. where it's it's very much about we're gonna put some transgressive stuff up on the screen, yep. and you know the characters are just basically horrible cutouts who are pasted and you yep. know marched through the motions to make the the violence happen. Yep, it's okay. an art thing. So on the interesting side with this as well to mention is that it's on Netflix and mm. being Netflix off, it's actually already out. Or at least, I'm not sure if it's going to have any more seasons, but I know that they have like a clump of episodes at the very least. I'm assuming it's the whole thing. So for Devil Man Cry Baby, you can check out all of it, like presumably. All, all 10 episodes, yeah. Oh, on Netflix, and you can check that out at oglink.com slash 1P27. Okay. Next up is another sort of horror, sh- horror show, Junji Ito Collection, uh, or Junji. Oh, Junji. Or you. Ito Junji Collection. Now, this these as a manga artist, he's pretty well known. Like even like for Western sort of horror, not even necessarily like manga fans, like mm-hmm. Spiral, and I'm going to pronounce it wrong. The one of the people turning into the fish monster, being attacking people. One like Go Go Go. Isn't that his as well? GYO, I think. Oh, yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, and isn't also the Amagi Mountain or Crag, the one where the people go into it and go dur 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 and they pop out as the surf like string monsters? Mm, that one's not ringing a bell for me. Yeah, but anyway, um, the concept for this show is that it is a horror anthology. There are multiple um, stories every episode. Um, episode one has two stories, one longer, one shorter. Um, the, short, the second one is about a girl who has this horrible disease where she is turning into a doll. Well, not like a happy, fun Barbie doll. It's a creepy, jointed Lolita doll. And her like aghast parents are like, oh my gosh, what do we do about it? There's nothing we can do to stop it. And then the longer story is about a creepy loser of a kid who is into casting curses on all the miserable peons, his words, of his high school who have embarrassed him or shown him up by pointing out that um, he's not really making very much sense and he's doing actually rather stupid things when he thinks he's being cool. See, when earlier I brought up the whole like thing about the person being known for the manga artist that mm-hmm. they're basing these stories off of has some sort of like recognition. I was kind of expecting something decent. I mean, not necessarily great, great, but something mm-hmm. right, better yeah. than this. But this was just cavity crap. It's just, crap. It's, it's just loathem some. It's yeah, just not, nothing good about it. It's like more goofy than horror. I mean, it's just... Well, aside from the fact that his voodoo curses did actually work. Like yeah, but... When he, when he, like, did stick nails into a voodoo doll, the guy he was sticking the nails into, like, actually, like, got hurt. Or he felt pain. He felt but, pain, I suppose. But no one was killed thing. off in there. No one was horribly. Right. Yeah. Uh, mm. The second one with the... What little... about the frog? The frog didn't live. Regardless, <laughs> this is not something... Um, I, look, you, again, it goes back to like Devil Man Cry, uh, Cry Baby or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll know if you like this kind of thing. Right. If this is sort of the kind of anime that you seek out. And I say that because there was probably a good decade of all the anime that was coming out was all exactly like this kind of stuff. It was all sort of creepy, going for creepy, uh, devil vampires, creepy, blood, gods, violent, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm sure there are a generation of anime watchers mm-hmm. who are totally into these kind of things. But so. That's kind of my complaint, though, is that it fails at that. It's not yeah, actually it, creepy. It, it's I mean, just... a whole. The whole um, 
tone of these type of horror shows is that there's this sort of like subtle, inevitable horror of creeping up on you. And no matter what you do, there's just this weight drawing you towards the horrible conclusion. Mm -hmm. And in this one, it just seems kind of arbitrary. Like it doesn't seem like anything is, you know, pulling these people towards a horrible end. It's just like this guy is a jerk and he's doing curses on his classmates and why is nobody kicking him in the nuts? <laughs> He's very clearly like villain monologuing right in front of people. Yeah. And they're all just ignoring him instead of going, oh, wait, he says he's going to curse something, curse somebody, and then something some bad happens to somebody. And they're like, well, why don't we just beat him up on suspicion? Because, I mean, high school students are not usually that restrained. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't recommend this, but again, I'm the one who's always going to be sort of negative on on the recommendations for this. I don't. I don't think this is a high quality anything. To There's be honest, the, like out of all the people here, I think I'm the closest one to watch something that's a horror thing. And I'm telling you, stay away from this. This is not actually going to satisfy you from a horror standpoint. It's just yeah. camp at it, best. It doesn't look good. There's nothing good about it. So, someone pronounce his name, please, again for me. Uh, Ito Junji. Collection. It's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out at otlink.com slash 1P28. Okay, what's next? Next up is Katana Maidens. Toji no Miko? Correct. Mm-hmm. All right, so <laughs> high school girls uh, given swords. Club. And, man, there are a lot of high school girls. With that swords. Is, there are a lot of high school girls in this show. I mean, there's just one after the other. I mean, they were running out of character designs as they went along. Yeah. And these aren't, like wooden swords they're like actual swords katanas yeah actually yeah. they're magic swords because these girls are all members of the Miko program that defends Japan from the attacks of random giant monsters in the grim darkness of the future there are only girls fighting with swords yes yeah. like and the, the, the idea <laughs> is you pull out your sword power up and that gives you some sort of super duper monster slaying ability and then they have a tournament yeah, I mean, they open up before the opening credits with the sword fighting monster thing, and then they don't do anything with the monsters thing. They don't even mention the monsters. Instead, they have this torment. And then it ends, mild spoiler, with one of the girls trying to assassinate some... Some head. other girl. <laughs> yeah, so it's like... And then they run away because they fail. So <laughs> it's like kind of slightly all over the place. And they don't even explain the mechanics of this magical sword thing where it looks like they're cutting each other in half as they're glowing, but then they didn't actually cut each other in half as long as they're not glowing or something like that. Yeah, they, like, I, they consider a, a, a finishing blow to be a magic hit that will, like, knock you out of your magic persona trance. So, so that's that's basically what it is. So they kind of fail to explain what the hell's I, actually I, I going on. I was yawning my way through this one. <laughs> yeah. if they, and if they tried to explain it, it would have been even more boring than the actual show itself, <laughs> which was pretty boring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there are so many better girls doing things shows this season, yep. unless you just really like the sort of generic girl battle uh, tournament thing. Yep. Uh, or yeah, don't, have a, don't bother. Or a specific interest in I'm, Katana. I'm I don't it, know. It, I, it, I thought they had like a couple of interesting fight moves. That That's true. And I mean, the, the series looks okay. Like a couple of the fights were decently animated, but, the, but I mean, that was like, you know, a total of what, 20 seconds? Of, <laughs> the total 24 minutes of this show. Yeah. Yeah. This is more like real sword fighting where if you like get to your fourth exchange of blows, you're not really doing it very well. <laughs> yeah. The math doesn't add up on this. Uh, it, it was animated fairly. Yeah. Um, but you, but it, I, I wouldn't put a lot of time it's, in it. It's bland. This is, uh, you know, so low bottom of the pack for mm-hmm. me, but not mm-hmm. like the worst thing ever. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. offensive. It was just, as you yeah, said, high I, I mean, I would recommend you watch this over than the le- like last two that we just talked about. But, uh, you know, by comparison, it, it's not going to do a lot for you, I think. So, Katana Maidens. Oh, I forgot to mention the dash. Katana Maidens dash. It's not said dash. It's just this actual symbol. Tochi no Miku. It's on Crunchyroll. And you can check out ochilink.com slash 1P29. Next up is Miss Kosumi Loves Ramen Noodles. Ramen Daisuke Kosumi-san. She sure does. So, this is another show <laughs> about a mysterious transfer student. Uh, a long, a blonde, long-haired girl shows up in school, and she's very cool, doesn't really make friends, but the ginky girl in the class determines that nobody should be without friendship, so she tries to engage this girl in conversation, 
and it doesn't really work. She tries to see what she does. It doesn't really work. And then she finds her standing at the end of a very long line of men who are waiting to get into a ramen shop. And she's like, ha. Huh. Well, a schoolgirl shouldn't be in a line with, like, a bunch of men by herself. So she sort of joins her so that she won't be alone. And the girl ignores her. Uh, but it turns out the girl really loves ramen. Like, the only time she ever cracks a smile is after she's just had ramen. And I can relate to that. Mm. <laughs> it was yeah. good ramen. So, so the problem with this show is is more or less that, like, the ramen girl is just an asshole. <laughs> I mean, she, there is nothing redeeming about her. And Genki girl is also basically an asshole. I mean, <laughs> her interest in, uh, in Koizumi is more or less... Uh, written as suggestive and slightly lascivious in addition to the uh, uh, sort of as she comes to learn the joys of ramen mm -hmm. so the one thing that would salvage this is sort of the, the food aspect because this is yet another food show and uh, they do talk about the different types of ramen in very, very familiar detail. Yes, they do. So, I mean, one of the things I often say is you don't, you know, for a good show, you do not actually have to be interested in whatever it's about to enjoy it. In this case, the only reason that you would want to watch this show is if you're interested in like some obscure, let's f find out more about ramen. <laughs> and not even well-drawn ramen. I mean, the, uh -huh. the color palette they're using just was not, it didn't make the ramen look that appealing. So I was, in fact, interested in some of uh, this description of ramen variations. I mean, that mm -hmm. made me hungry, made me want to you know, try yeah. find, find a good cookbook here. But it did not make me want to watch this show because yep. it was, I, I, hate the, I hate the characters. They're just bleh, not nice to watch. I could recommend YouTube channels if you're really into ramen. Yeah. Uh, Simon and uh, Martina, I think, is one. One, they live in Japan. Or actually, I think they're now living mm. in Korea. But to the point, they do do a little thing about food, but they actually go to a place that's authentic. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, talk about it. But anyhow, um, I'm, I'm wasting time. So, Lynx? So, I guess no one here is planning to watch yeah. any more. We'd probably not recommend it unless you're super, obs super I, obsessed with ramen. I might watch another one just because it's about food. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I will say, Ben, my roommate, probably recommends it because he was all about it. Ah, okay. Yum, yum. So, Miss Kasumi Loves Ramen Noodles. It's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out at oglink.com slash 1P2B. And the Japanese title is Ramen Daisuke Koizumi-san. Okay, the next, next one. Deeper scene, such deeper scene from Pop Team Epic. Mm. All right, Paul, oh, your favorite. <laughs> oh, man. Now, these, the, the, the people who, so you want to talk assholes. The real assholes this season are the people who made this <laughs> show. So, I, I mean, so, there, there's some shows that just make me scream in pain and hatred, like idle chatter shows or like what is it, the Gouda Gouda Fairies, the yeah. absolute yeah. worst take on the idle sh uh, chatter show. But, but like this, this is just somebody setting up, I'm going to make a bad anime. I'm just going to make it really annoying to watch. Or I think it's like intentionally a troll anime. It is. I mean, that is, and that's all it is. And that actually makes it less painful to watch. It just makes it dumb and annoying. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what this is. This is ugly, ugly character designs. It's it's very obviously a whole bunch of like four coma manga that have been whipped together with like ugly flash animation and just like hammer at the viewer one after another with the pop team epic um, eye catch popping in between them. Constantly. Constantly. Some of these might have been one or two coma because there is not a lot of material here. These are you know, sort of super quick gags or sight gags. Yeah, and a lot of them, I'll be charitable and say they did not appeal to my sense of humor. <laughs> I mean, there were a couple that were vaguely um, interesting. I mean, there was like a, there was like a Totoro reference in there, and yeah, and there, there were like like two moments that were not as horrible as everything else. Uh, but but they've they've done the voice acting. They've given male voice actor voice actors to these female students, or at yeah. least for the first half. Because uh, okay, so oh my god, and and here's the worst part <laughs> of it. There's a bait and switch because you watch the beginning of it, and it looks like. A typical harem show where you've got the dull, uninteresting male character, high school aged, and then three girl idol singers 
who glom around, who glom onto him and make his life, you know, embarrassing or difficult or whatever. And then that's the last you ever see of that shit. That just vanishes, and we go into the, the flash animation uh, for comic. That's not the worst until the part end, until the end, though. The worst part is ah. So the, the worst part is so you said you 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 say to yourself, thank fucking god I survived this piece of. This is drivel. fifteen minutes of anguish, and then it restarts. Then, yeah. Then you they do the entire series again with slightly different voice acting. They they with different voice actors. There may be a couple frames of animation that are different, but. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> exactly the same jokes. Exactly the same beats. It is excruciating. Yeah, definitely not recommended. No, I mean this is. Just, I mean, I, I think that the, the the creator of this may have some fans, so I don't know. And perhaps yeah. there's a pre-existing audience for this that's going to get something out of it. <coughs> but I, I'll tell you, I got oh. less than nothing out of it. All this I thing. can say is, if the original manga is good, they did not do a good job of adapting it for an anime. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't even, I, I, I don't even hate this show. I'm just like, I have <laughs> contempt for it. It or, was, it was just exhausting, like trying to keep up with the pace of this. So let me ask this question: What would you prefer to watch, this or The Little Prince? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, can, you give me an answer. I can think of one like type of use for this anime, though. It's if you want to like troll someone who's like a big anime fan and like convince them to watch this. Mm-hmm. Just don't be in there while they're watching it, <coughs> or as. <laughs> because I mean it's a troll anime like intentionally trolling the audience mm-hmm. so if mm-hmm. you want to troll your friends I, I, I just have like horrible flashbacks to like a clockwork orange where Alex is like strapped to a chair with his eyelids pried open and they're forcing him to like watch you know horrible horrible things while listening to his favorite music yeah but truth this isn't the worst thing we've ever watched it's I mean, it's, well, that's it. it's, it's just uh, yeah it's it's too deliberate to actually be as terrible as it wants to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's sad that's the truth <laughs> it ends up it ends up feeling very forced in what it's trying to do as opposed to just you know sort of being organically sincerely horrid <laughs> So none of us here are going to watch it. Nope. We're not going to recommend it for anyone unless you're already a fan of the person who made the original mm. like content, manga, whatever stuff. And but you know who you are in that case. For shame. So Pop Team Epic, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check it out at oglink.com slash 1P2C. C as in cat. Next up is Record of Grand Crest War. Grand Crest Senki. And this is basically sort of a, a magic sh- a magic swords and sorcery sorcery show. It's set in a world where chaos magic powers these things called crests that the nobility and lords have. And I guess they have like super powerful fighting abilities because of these crest things. Yeah. Um, the story opens with a horrible, horrible thing happening. There's a political marriage that's about to take place in the Grand Cathedral between the leader, the daughter of the one huge warring faction and the son of the other huge warring faction when, all of a sudden, a huge chaos demon manifests right at the top of the church, puts up a force barrier, and then eats the leaders of each coalition, thereby sundering the peace effort and condemning the world to another generation of senseless magic-fueled war. You were paying a lot more attention than I was. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. because that is just the beginning. That's like the first five minutes. Yeah, that's the first five minutes. And it all could have been averted had the one magic user who knew what was going down had been allowed to fight the demon before it fully manifested and disrupted everything. I really just thought it was just a marriage and I thought the girl said something about why do I have to give a speech to yeah, our thing. but she's so. like a, a mage or something so she, she recognized the demon manifestation when it in initially started and like some idiot prevented her from like running up to the front and disrupting the ceremony and then the demon popped in and it did a pretty good job of disrupting everything. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, further into the story, like she and then the guy who got disgraced because she's he stopped her from stopping this horrible mm-hmm. stuff happened. Like 
he is now like her servant type thing. They're on the carriage and they get stopped by a bunch of guards who are being assholes. There's a whole lot of people stopping people or not stopping people in this in this anime. Yeah, and essentially they're about to like have a fight when this like guy who wants to be a knight or something breaks up the fight think, thinking it's a damsel in distress. He goes and like fights and she's like, oh, let's watch him and see if he's any good and then decides <laughs> that he has potential so she does an oath with him even yeah. though. So she swears fealty to him since he's a young noble with dreams of fighting back the demons, reuniting the peoples, and, you know, lifting the the terrible influence of chaos magic on the land, which apparently, like, causes many ecological disasters. She's like, huh, okay, you got Moxie. Tell you what, kid, I'll join you. But it's essentially like, she's what? pulling the strings throughout the whole damn yeah. thing. <laughs> it's sort of a Puss in Boots narrative where this glod finds someone who is much smarter and cleverer than him and they basically take him under their wing and and like improve his fortunes thereby. I, I did appreciate that in fact in this case the Svengali character is a uh, is a female mm-hmm. which is unusual for these sort of light uh, light novel RPG Fantasy type world things. adaptations. Um, I mean, let's be honest here. This is not a great story. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is basically no novelty anywhere near this thing. It's from the author of Record of Lodos War. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there hasn't been like a lot of development in sort of moving beyond uh, those straight up RPG trips. That being said, I mean, this was kind of enjoyable to watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the, 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 the stupid world building stuff. Yeah, it's there. But I actually kind of like the character. Characters. I kind of liked um, the sort of the dynamic in this show. I doubt that will stick around, but I might actually watch one more just to see if it's going to be watchable. I don't know. If they keep up the dynamic of of her sort of like pulling strings to get this, this young guy to, you know, be the, the savior of the lands, I think that might be a really amusing thing to see like somebody who's basically not really sure of how to accomplish that being staged managed by by a mage from from behind the scenes and and i do like that sort of odysseus type of trope where the you know the triumph through guile Mm -hmm. as opposed to straight up force of arms i mean there's some force of arms there too but it's really you know the guileful clever character with the plans that unfold that that's fun to watch and i i might actually um i'm i'm actually this this might be my guilty pleasure show for this season. <laughs> well, well, we'll see how it goes. I yeah. think it's worth at least checking it out, especially if you're into swords and sorcery type shows. I personally am not planning to watch any more, but it wasn't painful to watch, I think, as I said. And nobody was pulled from one world into another world. Yet. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's true. Yeah. You never know with AMA well, Aside anymore. from, like, the demon or whatever. But, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't count. The, the demon, do that the demon anyway. was not in high school, so it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Poor demon. I felt sad for it. <clears throat> So, if you want to check out Record of Grand Crest War, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out at ochilink.com slash 1P2D. Next up is Sanrio Boys. And, oh, I... Sanrio Danji. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I was actually kind of excited <laughs> at the start of this show because they killed one of the bishis, like, in the first five minutes. It looked like he was actually going to die. And I'm like, wow. You know, they, they never kill the bishis, but it turns out they, they never kill... They, 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 they didn't break their rule. Ah, uh, yes. So the bishi was actually in a play, and he states, well, let's watch the rest of this season so we could find out how we got to this utterly dramatic point where the character didn't die. And like, eh. <sighs> so this is a show about high school boys, five very attractive and stylishly dressed high school boys, uh, except for one who's just a schlub. Oh, I'm sure that once he gets a little bit of confidence in the wardrobe update, he'll also be pretty <laughs> and stylishly dressed. He's not currently sparkling, so it doesn't count. No, <laughs> that's true. He doesn't sparkle yet, as the others do, um, and this is because. He doesn't know what to commit himself to. He's an average kid. He doesn't go to prep school. He doesn't belong to a club. He's not on a sports team. He's not wildly dedicated about anything, which, considering the eventual fate that befalls him, might have been a better way to live. Because what happens is, as he goes through the episode, 
he discovers that, gosh, just about everybody around him is very much into Sanrio products and programming. And even though you, the viewer, are maybe male, that does not mean you can also not... You, you, you may purchase Sanrio products. Mm-hmm. You may love them. You may mm-hmm. carry them with you. You may carry their joy to others. But and that is the, the, the <laughs> message, the, the good news this show brings us. Actually, the two girls that are shown sort of being described to the boys, hmm. or being described by the boys, that, hey, we're boys and we like Sanrio stuff, they're kind of like, okay, that's kind of okay, but they don't really that care that much about Sanrio. So it seems like this is a world where the boys like Sanrio and the girls don't really give a damn one way or the other about <laughs> Sanrio. <laughs> Which we know is not realistic. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I was, so after this, the sort of the uh, open of this show, I, <laughs> it, it went pretty generic for a while. I mean, the, it's it's your you know your standard array of bishis being, you know, having still frames of them and, you know, the posing. And the shower mm-hmm. scene. Yep, yep. <laughs> but actually, uh, as this show went on, I actually was kind of enjoying it. I mean, for a show <laughs> of this type, it actually is kind of amusing and well executed. I, I mean, was having fun making fun of it. Yeah, but. yeah. Well, no, but that's it. I mean, this is not a good show. But I mean, I, <laughs> but I, 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 but if you're looking for you know the the prancing bishi show, this is one of the <laughs> least offensive incarnations of it that I've seen. You're thinking about at least they're not in a band, and that's not like a throwaway joke. I mean, truly, most of them they're in the freaking band, so at least yeah. it's different. Yeah, it's not it's not straight up an idol show. Yeah. And there are actual girls in this show. It is not strictly about the interactions of these boys with each other. Yeah, the boys are, are I mean the girls are in this world, but it's about the relationship of these boys with each other, <laughs> staring at each other while well, they're in the uh, shower. Yeah. And most of the girls are just there to ooh and ah over how awesome yeah. the like handsome boys look, are. Look, nobody's pretending this show <laughs> is anything other than what it is. Let's let's be clear. The yeah. final thought is it's better than pop team epic. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, I don't think any of us are going to be running, running to the TV to watch more of this. But uh, I would recommend it for those that are into boy, pretty boy fan service shows. And there right. is an audience for that. And, so. and it's a growing audience. Yeah. And of that, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I would say this is one of the better entries in this because it's you know somewhat less insulting to your intelligence. Yeah. And, and it's not like... <laughs> 40 minutes of endless chatter about one stupid subject across all the pretty boys. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not in, it's not like stuff like that. At this but, point, we don't know. Episode 3 might be nothing, but I'm yeah, staying around I, discussing <laughs> LOK for all we I, know. I, I, I'm not going to hold out a lot of hope for the rest of the show, but based on sort of the, the connoisseurship I've developed through what, for, through watching many, many first episodes of horrible Bishi shows, <laughs> this, is, this is closer to the top of the pack. Okay. So, uh, Link... So, Sanrio Boys, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check it out at oglink.com slash 1P2E. Right. Next up is Slow Start. Mm-hmm. Okay, the thing about this show is that I actually really like the background music. Like, I don't plan to watch any more of the show itself, but I think sometime in the future I'll see if, like, there's a soundtrack, like, release of just the background <laughs> music. Because it has this sort of, like, nice sort of, like, jazz cafe type, mm. like, Frenchy type sound, like like not card core jazz, like not really good jazz, but mm-hmm. you know, like smooth, not really smooth jazz either. Um, you could probably maybe mm. better describe the type of, or not. I I'm not recalling it. it that, this was like the second show I watched, uh, so the music yeah. did not stick with me. I mean, it's no. not like music that I think most other people listen to this and be like, oh boy, but like for me, for some reason, I enjoyed the music in this and calm me sort of nice, pleasant way. Yeah. So. Um, this is another one of those shows about high school girls hanging out and not really doing much of anything. Um, the, the ostensible plot is that our protagonist, Hana, is kind of short and underdeveloped for her first day of high school. She looks like she still belongs in middle school. Uh, most of the girls in this show do, actually. Yeah, and <laughs> Aside from the one who looks like she should be in elementary school. Oh, Come yeah. On. <laughs> yeah, and she shows up at, at a high school to discover that just about everybody here already knows one or two people from middle school or, God forbid, even elementary school. So they're already sort of instantly falling into little friendships and cliques, and she is the odd man out. And she is really, really desperate to, like, meet some friends, but there are no, like, unattached people that she can befriend. And they're making it sound like it's really dramatic, but I mean, less than halfway into the series, she makes a group of friends. Oh, yeah, and but don't worry, she, out. she like, stumbles into a bunch of people who are more than willing to befriend her for basically no reason whatsoever. Mm. And 
then she just becomes one of four instead of all by herself. Their eyes are freaky. They don't really look like they have pupils. I mean, they, they yeah, kind of they bear- do this this weird technique animating the eyes in this show where they look basically like sort of high res flat crystals instead of drawn mm-hmm. eyes, and it's interesting. It's much more detailed than than regular anime eyes, but it also is really unnerving because they look like toys even rather than like anime characters. Or aliens with various sort of like colored filters and stuff, the regular yeah. deep black eyes that come to abduct you. <laughs> yeah, if, if their eyes were like darker, they'd look like gray aliens with hairdos. <laughs> But also, there's this one girl with, like, the snaggletooth thing, but they're not actually coloring the tooth white. They're coloring it the flesh tone. Yeah, there's tone. just this little, like, point <laughs> triangle and the lip. extension of her upper lip. <laughs> so it's not a lip. It's it's sort of a, it's not a tooth. It's a lip extension. So these characters are not interesting to watch. <laughs> I mean, once again, this is just the most blandly generic of blandly generic shows. The main character is, you know, barely competent to feed herself, uh, let alone, you know, like walk down the street safely. The uh, start isn't the only thing that's slow in this show. And that's actually <laughs> something I was thinking, like, while watching. Uh, yeah, I, that was exactly the first thing I, I thought. The first 30 seconds, like, oh, boy. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, the show's just vacuous. I mean, there's there's <laughs> nothing here. Uh, Except for the background music. Except for the background music. Or for me, at least. I can't yeah. speak for anyone else, but damn, I enjoyed that. And all these nice. characters are theoretically in high school, but there's a lot of variation in their uniform designs. I know that they would not have gotten away with going to the uh, the school of the other one we watched. Uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the uh, escalator school. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay, so... Um, OG Link, do you mean? Yeah. Okay, so none of us are planning to watch it. it. It's not the most offensive thing we've seen. No, and if and if you just like, um, you know, if if you love watching the moe, this will give you the moe. So there's at least one demographic for it, yeah. and we're not going to like think horribly of you if you like this show at no, least. Not at all. So slow starts. It's on Crunchyroll, and you can check it out at oglink.com/slash1p2f. Next up is Working Buddies! Exclamation point. Which is our first and only short this week. Kataraku Oni-san. Okay, the thing that really disappointed me with this is it opens up with marionettes. If the whole damn thing was marionettes, it would have been interesting and different. Yeah, or, they only do that for the opening and the closing. No, the oh. closing arc is clay. Oh, it's is claymation. That? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, well, again, it's not what the bulk of the show is, and it's more interesting than the bulk of the show. <laughs> The bulk of the show is cheap animation Flashy about type stuff. delivery worker cats. There's one guy yep. who's super energetic but lazy, and then his slow-moving but more committed to the job co-worker, and then there's their weird, creepy supervisor, the pro. Who I think is high. <laughs> I mean, like his eyes are just I like don't know. I got the feeling that he was just sort of like, burned out and he had that thousand yard stare from doing you know package cat. delivery too long but they're cats and they carry boxes they that's de- pretty much a whole damn show <laughs> yeah they deliver boxes this is not a long show and it's just Four basically personality playing off personality in the workplace so it's yep. I guess a, a workplace comedy in that regard um, but it's it's just the one guy being genki but lazy and then his you know, more work or his guy with a better work ethic going, look, if you don't work, we're going to be here forever. And then their boss going, well, is everything loaded? I guess it's time to deliver the packages. And there's a creepy koala. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the koala. Yeah. It's not going to be part of the further of the show, mm-hmm. I suspect. Yeah, yeah, look, this is a four minute short. Um, it, it's not even worth the four minutes, to be honest. The, yeah. uh, the, the writing, this show's a bit underwritten, shall we say. <laughs> Even yeah. for four minutes. That's Even kind of for four minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just I, like, I, I, I was bo- I was well and truly bored. Like a, you can see our enthusiasm of, this, of yeah. how much mm. in four minutes or less we are not even hating on it that effectively. Mm. We just don't. It, it's, it's not but worth your four of, minutes. That's kind of like the positive thing, though. I mean, I'm not saying any of us would recommend it or plan to it's watch not any more. Bad enough to arouse our ire. Yeah. So at least it has that going for it. <laughs> 
and yeah, and it's yeah. Th- this is one that would it would be very hard to remember to watch week to week. I mean, you would just forget it existed. Yeah, the, the yeah. most interesting thing is when they get to the end of their deliveries, they discover oh, there's one last package that we forgot to deliver, mm. and it pops open, and there's a creepy godlike koala in it. Yep, that says a couple of very cryptic, enigmatic, cosmic level things, and then they. The boss goes, I'd better deliver this one. You're overselling it. It wasn't even like that interesting. This, this show you know, is, is is deeply convinced of the importance of picturing the dynamics of what it's like to work in a package delivery service. And, and so I we, mean, it's like very detailed. Yes, we're going to carry the boxes into the truck. Now we're going to ride in the truck. Now we're going to take the box out of the truck. Now we're carrying it up to the stairs. Now we're handing it over. I mean, just it's uh, a then little... Then we hand it to the customer. Not look, neglecting to get a signature for our he, he, receipt. Here's the r- ringing red flag, because there's really not much more to say. <laughs> it has cats in it, and Botas didn't even think much <laughs> of it. Or I like the opening with the marionettes. It's the one thing that mm-hmm. any reason why to at least watch one episode is for that very brief opening. Since at least check yep, that that's out. Fair. That's fair. So, Working Buddies, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check it out at oglink.com slash 1p2g. That's it <laughs> for today. I mean, That's we're the end of part one of our 2018 winter impressions. Ex- tune in next week for part two. Or tuna. Uh, yeah. I don't even know uh, how many more shows are coming, but I suspect more. A lot, yeah, more, a lot more than than, uh, than just the first 11. Um, okay, so with that, um, then it's, it's worth saying that it's time to wrap up this show. So, with that said, um, we have websites, www.talkageneration.net or ognetworks.tv. Check out the show, the notes, the casts, and all kinds of links and things there for all the stuff we mentioned here. Um, So, what are we going to do next week? We're going to continue along this mad path of watching all those first impression shows and um, give you our impressions. And that will be Wednesday, because that's when we podcast. For feedback, you can always hit us up at otaku.generation at gmail.com or over Skype, Otaku Generation, one word. Okay, Matt. Um, mm. oh, we got yes. a fortune. Oh, do we have an appendage? Yeah, something hardly spliced together. <laughs> okay, so with a crying Hello Kitty delivering... Uh, sorry, with a crying... Hello Kitty, Samurai, the Viverine Ramen in Between the Sheets. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this week's fortune cookie to guide you through your upcoming week is All the effort you are making will ultimately pay off. With a crying Hello Kitty, Samurai, the Viverine Ramen in Between the Sheets. Thank you very much, Ketchup. I think there's one more thing there that I forgot. A oh, well. penguin. No, no, something like that related to like this crap. We forgot to end the show. Yeah, well, thank you, everyone. Um, we, we're, we're going. It's freezing in here, and uh, it's time for us to end the show. Have a good Stay week. Stay warm. Stay warm, and uh, you'll get more impressions from us next week.